It's a huge week for music tech and we are going to break it all down. Pioneer DJ is changing the game for DJs with a massive update to their record box software. Isotope is harnessing the power of AI to revolutionize audio repair with RX11. Plus, a legendary synth is getting a modern makeover with GeForce. But that's not all. We have got news on AI's impact on the music industry, a shocking report on DJ Pace, and a brand new music conference coming to Chicago. It is that time of the week. It is time to tune in. In our biggest story this week, we are paying attention to the DJs of the world, and Alpha Theta, the parent company of Pioneer DJ, have released the latest revision of their record box software. The software is not just a new update, but a complete code rebuild that includes some new design ideas and a complete overhaul of the engine to improve efficiency. One of the biggest complaints of the record box ecosystem has been CPU usage, and Alpha and Theta are using a new software software package to reduce the load on your processor by 50%. This is one of the more welcome announcements as CPU usage was always heavy to the point of making the software seem bloated. Some of the design changes are also very welcome as the company has implemented a new file system organization where you can view all the tracks in each folder even those in subfolders. Finally 2024 record box, what a year. This allows for faster navigation as users won't have to keep clicking through various file trees to find the track they are looking for. Updated playing controls also bring new ways of playing with EQ band kill switches and beat jump and a new auto gain that will keep the things leveled without having to adjust with a mouse. If you own a piece of hardware, in order to use registered features of the software in the past, you will be required to connect your players or controllers to the computer for access. Yeah, every single time. But this has been now been sold by doing a one-time registration, 2024, what a year, that unlocks those premium features permanently on the registered device. Back-to-back -back sets are also about to get better, as playlist collaboration is now supported, so partnering DJs can set up playlists together ahead of time. One feature that is not included that has been hotly anticipated since the company bought Serato is stamp separation. It looks like DJs have to wait longer for that feature to make it into the software. Recordbox 7 is available for free, and I will link the site below. And according to the company, all hardware should already be compatible with the new software. Another major update in software would land it this week as Isotop released their latest audio repair software RX11. The industry standard software helps to repair or dress up your dialogue, speech or vocals, and the company has really pushed into a next generation version with the new release. In what they call an industry first, RX now utilizes a connected neural network to better assist with the repair assistant. This isn't Isotope's first use of neural networks in their software, as Ozone Mastering Suite has utilized machine learning for a few years now. And while the concept isn't novel for audio software, Isotope is claiming that the repair assistant will make it faster than ever to complete tasks by making suggestions for settings based on the network's information. They're also using the network in a new feature for standard and advanced users in music rebalance, which can now separate elements from mixed files to allow for adjustments to the separated parts. RX11 is available now in three flavors, elements, standard and advanced with starting prices for elements at 53 euros. We are a tiny channel trying to make difference in music industry by providing the objective news every week to you. And we really need your help to keep this up. If you want to help us out, please consider like and subscribe. That would mean world to us. The Oxford synthesizer company, more well known as Oscar, released a flagship mono synth in 1983, and its filter became so iconic, Omnisphere licensed the use of just its filter. G4 software makes a plethora of analog synth emulations, and the Imposcar has been a staple of their offerings for years. This week, version 3 updates the classic synth even further by adding 
more modern features and some welcome design changes to the synth. They kept the odd split component look of the original synth, but made the whole thing full scalable, making it use more of the monitor space you have on your system. The original Oscar was analog only synth, and GeForce decided that just wasn't cutting it in today's age of multi sound type synths. Not only can wavetables be added, but an editor also allows further inputs into how you want your sounds to be shaped. While synth purists may say this goes well beyond just recreating the classic, don't worry, the 9 mode variable filter is unchanged, which made the original synth the icon that is today. The updated impost car is available from the G4 site for 130 euros. Our last updated product for the show is a powerhouse hybrid synth from Traction Audio. Horizon version 2.5 uses four available sample engines as well as a four voice dual oscillator wavetable synth to combine deep reach sounds in a tons of ways. With 10 voices per note using all those sound generators, gives ultimate flexibility to sculpt and combine sounds in different ways. At the center of the plugin is an XY control that morphs between four sample and synth engines, making playing the synth a moving and evolving experience. 18 effects with 4 effects slots give you even more options for moving the sounds. Designable LFOs, dual arpeggios and multi-mode filters really push the choices on how to make sounds happen to the interesting territories. An introductory price of $90 is available for a limited time, with standard cost of $130 for all these sound options. As always, I will put the link below. Going back to the classic hardware emulations, this next plugin is definitely one to pay attention to. First, let me tell you a bit about the history. In 1979, ARP Instruments started researching and developing a new synth they were going to bring to the market. And it was supposed to be a huge innovation, but by 1981, the company was bankrupt and wasn't able to release the production version of the Chroma that had been in development for a couple of years. But then Rodos Corporation bought the ARP instruments and included the Chroma, which hadn't been released. The Chroma was way ahead of its time, as it was a polyphonic synthesizer that had 16 voices and was controlled by a microprocessor, which today doesn't sound interesting but was a first at the time. Rhodes only produced 3000 copies of the synth and people were not using home computers like today so using a microprocessor was very futuristic that time. The Chroma has become exceptionally rare understandably but still highly thought of even with the difficult programming needed for the synth. Cherry Audio has recreated the synth and made things easier for to work out with on-screen drop-down menus instead of the single light buttons. Cherry kept most of the original behavior of the synth, promising to create a really unique classic emulation. In standard Cherry fashion, they've kept the pricing lower as well, and you can get the copy only for 70 euros today. Do you enjoy cable plugin? Does your rack make you dream of being the next ambient star? UA's new Quadra Modular is trying to make all of these scenarios much more approachable and cheaper to get into using these synths. The new instrument uses a 4 quadrant design that again lets you mix and match various machines to get the right sounds mixed together. The sounds are sampled from big systems, classic racks, semi-modular designs, micro designs, digital synths and drums, lets you mix and match whatever you want to create with them. One of the examples of these synths is Colossus XL, which retails for 275,000 euros. Who does even buy this one? Like Lambo synth, making it a dream for most players to own one. I mean, I don't dream to own one. I would sell if I own one and then buy a house. <laughs> All of this hardware sampling and playback can be had an introductory price of just 99 euros, making it probably a bit easier to justify. Each instrument is then controllable by a 64 step sequencer that can then be assigned in multiple ways across the entire instrument or individually to each quadrant. The quadrant modular is out today and linked below in the description. What are two products that couldn't be more different that need to do cross-branding? I kind of foreshadowed a little bit. 
So if you said Lamborghini and picnics, I have just the product for you. Sell that house, sell that house. The vinyl playing powerhouse turntables of the last 50 years have collaborated with the supercar for a most unexpected co-branding. The SL1200M7B is a Lamborghini-themed version of the classic SL1200. Featuring the now iconic direct drive system, but this time in flashy Lambo colors and a bull logo on the platter and the box, so this turntable is ready to go places fast. For your 1600 euros investment, you will also get a color choice of racing green, bright yellow, and vintage orange, all chosen from Lamborghini color family. You can pre order your pair now with the special editions shipping in July. I have talked a lot about AI and music music in the news lately as we see it encroaching more and more into the creation process. It has even gotten to the point where OpenAI had two AI bots sing in harmony this week at their GPT conference. But why is AI so talked about in the news? In a report published on Monday, Udeal, an AI song maker who made waves by introducing a new model last month, has been making 10 songs per second. The wave of AI created songs is about to hit hard and heavy on the market, as 19.5 million tracks have been generated by AI have already hit the streaming services this year. With 864,000 more songs being created each day, the amount of generated music is growing exponentially, and the increasing numbers may soon create a problem. With all this material being created so quickly, streaming services may start running out of storage space for the amount of new music available. There are also many questions about royalty payments, and how quickly these services can keep up with the additional content management. Governments and music groups are on a crash course for needing regulation quickly, and as you would expect, TuneIn will continue to be your source for how laws are changing around AI-generated music and services. Whatever happens, we will report. With all the new music being pushed out with AI and the ability of anyone to upload to streaming platforms, companies are going to be looking for fast ways to identify the next hit. Chinese streaming service Tencent Music has decided to use AI to help them find what is going to be the next TikTok dance track. The firm is using an AI-powered predictive technology on its QQ music platform, and company believes it can help to identify and properly playlist a song to create a better and bigger response. The AI analysis of artist data and music content per release using a proprietary algorithm can, according to them, predict the next hit song by comparing the data analysis to recent popular music trends. This is in direct competition by not being identical to Spotify's new AI DJ platform that helps to create playlists through AI. TME's initiative is not to just put songs in playlists, but also push songs out to users to help stimulate the hit nature of the song. This isn't TME's first AI-based feature, as they introduced AI-based graphic visual themes to users last year. However, there is some controversy around its operations, as TME is facing 695 different lawsuits around copyright violations for its service, where it could be fined as much as $39 million. That hasn't slowed down the company's growth plan, as they are investing heavily in overseas entertainment companies to try and buy their way into various markets. It is clear that streaming services are investing heavily in AI product features, and TME is just the latest to use the technology in these ways. Have you been low-balled on an offer to perform recently? I have been. So maybe I'm not alone. The DJ memes showing DJs being paid by drink tickets may be more realistic than anyone would like it to be. An annual report by the International Music Summit released last month stated that 40% of the DJs are generally being paid less, while 40% of the DJs said they are struggling to find gigs in comparison to before the pandemic. While playing gigs is still seen as an important part of the artist's income, with 51% of those surveyed saying it's a better source of income than royalties, it is still seen as less important than making music. But 
makes the issue even worse is that revenue for electronic dance music grew steadily at 17% last year. This means that while the industry is still in a very expanding time, performers are getting less of the payouts they deserve. The report did have interesting things to say about revenue per genre. A steakhouse held on to its number one spot for the most revenue, with house and techno following thereafter. It also says the genre may not have peaked yet as it grew at a larger amount than it did in 2022. Yay! Being on the go, better operated musical instruments are key. From synthesizers to mobile DJ mixers, getting products that can travel is becoming increasingly important. One of the harder things to do for jet setters is to bring a sound system with them. Jet setters? I have no idea what that is. You are on a jet and setting the tracks? No idea. The options today for battery-powered loudspeakers are fairly limited. With booze and sound books, your only real option? Really? Is that true? Unless you want to use a GBL Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> Poor jet setters. LD Systems has now thrown their hat in the ring with an portable 10-inch loudspeaker that's compact, has wheels, and is better operated. The any time is 160 watt loudspeaker that is just 18 kilos, very easy, and runs on a rechargeable battery that company says can operate for up to 25 hours per charge. The speakers has a whole host of connectivity options from USB-C to Bluetooth operations and even has a way to switch inputs with your food. The internal DSP even comes ready with a vocal mode that makes the singer's voice a priority for the output, making it ideal for vocal performers. With a 45Hz to 20kHz frequency response, it can even represent your sub-frequencies well enough to make it work as a mobile DJ performer. Well, 45, I mean not the worst, but I prefer 30. Bass down now. Bass down now. The new series of any speakers is currently only available in the 10 inch size, but a planned 8 inch size is coming soon. You can pre order the speaker now for 700 euros. To all my US based subscribers, have you wanted the attend ADE but just couldn't afford a ticket to cross the pond? You may have a new option to get all your music business education this year. Chicago-based DJs Charm and Olivia Mancuso have announced their plan to host the inaugural Chicago Music Nexus in November of this year. I mean, this name is… why not just call it Chicago Dance Event? <laughs> I-C-M-N-C. Just call it C-D-E. Cool. The summit is promised to be a place where electronic music professionals and entrepreneurs can network, get education through seminars, and discover new ideas in the sessions for increasing revenue. Chicago is considered the birthplace of house music, so to establish a dance music conference there seems extremely appropriate. Using the ADE model, the panels will be collaborations on diversifying your income streams through social media, merchandise, subscription services, as well as how to run your licensing and sync deals properly. The pair currently hosts a podcast, Sherm in the Boot, and was featured at the Amsterdam event in 2023. While no tickets are on sale yet, and the website is currently not available, there is an early bird sign up page to get notified when things started to be announced. I will link it below and maybe someday I can be invited to be on a panel at this event. You never know, you may see me plan a US tour around the summit in the future. I mean, who knows? And finally today, I want to send a congratulations to Joel Zimmerman, the man under the famous mouse mask as he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Canadian Music Week Hall of Fame will officially welcome Dead Mouse on June 4, as the deserving recipient gets his due for changing dance music forever. For over 20 years, Joel has not only produced some of the most well-known dance tracks to ever be released, he has also entertained the world with his signature mask and clocked in 1.5 billion streams worldwide. It is a well-earned honor as he plans his Retro 5 Spective 25 years of Dead Mass tour that will debut this year. So here is to you Joel and I look forward to seeing you on the road in the future.
It has been an amazing week of news this week and I'm grateful you joined me as we covered not only the Superboot but the regular news. I will put the Superboot here if you missed that one. Tune in next week as I keep you up to date on the latest happenings in the music world.